Truckers XTV on air. We are now live in three, two, one. Welcome back to another episode of the Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. In the previous episode, oh man, we completed part one of trial one. Today's episode right now, we're going to go back to investigation part two. If you're hot today's episode, make sure that like button and support us group is the channel. I still can't quite believe, I still can't quite believe what just happened. I know, I inquired with the bailiff about the court session was adjourned. And it seems Mr. Vigil was taken to the hospital to recover. Right. Ten years ago now, Mr. Vigil attempted to commit suicide by jumping out of the window of the governor's office. But ever since then, he completely blocked the memory of those events from his mind. Nobody knew his secret, not his family, not even the man himself, but I forced it out of the open. Was it wrong of me to do that? Did I overstep the mark? I wonder. Bruno? Oh, Iris. You were miles away. Anyway, I brewed a fresh pot of soothing tea for you. Oh, thank you. You and Susie had an exhausting day so far, haven't you? Oh. Thank you, Iris. How thoughtful of you. Do you know, do you happen to know where Mr. Sholmes is? When we came into the courtroom back to the defense anti chamber he disappeared. Oh, no, I don't know. He just suddenly sprang his feet and left. All he said was, I must leave. I wonder if he's pursuing the mystery of Inspector Gregson's death. Well, you know what Hurley always says, don't you? There ain't there are mysteries in the world that should that should perhaps never be solved. But for the construction of a solution comes only at the expense of destruction or something something else. What does that mean? He knows very well that when you open someone else's own wounds, you often open your own too. But he just can't take his own advice and leave well alone. Solving mysteries is too important to him. That's so true. But that's what I like about Hurley, after all. I suppose that's a lot of great detective in some ways. So then... Let's have tea! And then I'll give you a hand. Oh, do you have time, Iris? Yes, I finished this month's manuscript at last, with barely a day to spare before the deadline. Oh, I'm so looking forward to it. A brand new story to read in the Adventures of Herlock Sholmes. You know, I was hiding Hurley's violin in the days before I have a deadline. You do? Oh, Mr. Sholmes. I'm sure that's very wise, Iris. How sensible of you. Now then, my dear fellows. Let's make a plan of action before we continue our investigation. So how did it go in the court in the morning? Well, we still don't know the truth about re what really happened, but one thing's increasingly clear. Lord Von Zeeks, Zeeks, Zeeks now, definitely didn't do it. Oh, goody. Yes, that's right. We managed to uncover several new facts as well. Oh, really? And there was another development too. Kazuma. Yes, it's quite clear now. That Kazuma Sama is not himself. The way he's acting, it's almost as if he's possessed. I know. I mean, at the end of proceedings earlier, he was like a bloodhound that the way he was chasing down Mr. Vigil's forgotten past. He's not normally so mercilessly persistent. What's going on in his head, I wonder? I really need to sit down with Kazuma and try to understand what he's going through. If Gregson was really murdered the day before his body was discovered, then Lord Von Zeeks has to, in had to be innocent, you see? 
what? The day before? Well, that should be easy enough to work out, just by examining the corpse, surely. Yes, you would expect so, but curiously, no time death was included in the autopsy report. Hmm, that curious. There are still unanswered questions about Lord Von Zeke, though, aren't there? Ah, do you mean... I mean, what was he doing there on Fresno Street that day in the first place? Well, according to the man's testimony, he said he was investigating Inspector Gregson, didn't he? And it turns out that little room was actually in the inspector's secret office. Oh, that sounds like it all has all making some wonderful the devilish plot. But then, what was this notice board in the cover? In the particular papers. Papers about cases like that linked to the Reaper. I'm starting to get a bad feeling about all of this. Oh dear, that sounds more like something horribly devilish. We must start. We're looking to expect a Grex's moment of late. Movements of late. I never imagined I might have to be investigating the inspector's movements. Well, according to the entry in this diary, he was carrying out an incognito investigation of the red-headed league the day before his death. You mean he was doing the same as Hurley? Well, Mr. Shumps was trying to apply, whereas the inspector was supposed to be investigating. I do wish it had been the other way around. Anyway, as it turns out, the inspector who went to the went to investigate the Redhead League that day, wasn't actually Grixon at all. It was Mr. Vigil, in possession of Grixon's identification. Mm, you know what that sounds like to me? Establishing an alibi. Yes, you're absolutely right, Iris. But why would Gregson need an alibi? It would appear the inspector had something to do that he wished to keep a secret. I don't believe it. I, I always thought he was trust a harmless lover of fish and chips. Or perhaps they were seasoned with something a little more potent than salt and vinegar. I think perhaps we should try to move, move away from food al allergies. Well, anyway, if Lord Von Zeeks felt the need to investigate Gregson... Yes, I agree. We must try to find out what he knows. Vigil, you say? Isn't that the name of the lady who came to visit Hurley yesterday? That's right. To ask Mr. Shelves if he would help her to find her missing husband. Only Mr. Shelves could really pass the buck to us. Actually, didn't you say that Mr. Vigil had been taken to the hospital? You know which one? Ah, it's St. Sinners. I'm starting to wonder if all of the hospitals in London have closed down. But that's amazing, Runo. You found the lady, her husband already. Well, I suppose I have, by accident. And ten years ago, while Mr. Vigil was the chief warden of the prison, he was responsible for overseeing the professor's incarceration. No! So when the convict escaped, he was held responsible and immediately dismissed. Uh, sometimes I really don't want to grow up. There's more. For 10 years after that, while he was ostensibly working as a peddler, he had a secret job. He was paid by Gregson to visit and stand in, to impersonate the inspector. I have absolutely no idea. Aw, uh, Jeannie was right. I'm starting to think all adults are up to no good now. Including you, Runo. I haven't paid anyone to impersonate me. That means he has ties to the professor and to the inspector Gregson though. So I don't think we ought to pay a visit to Mr. Vigil, don't you? Back to St. Sinners then. Well, I think it's clear what we need to do, isn't it? Let us investigate, my dear fellows. Oh, Iris! You've even more enthusiastic than usual today. If anyone has anything to hide, my special Wilson shooting iron will soon set them straight. But, water pistol? I stud full of piping hot extra special blend of mine. I'm quite sure it will be very effective. I better be careful not to hide anything. Well, it feels less strange that Mr. Schultz is nowhere to be seen, but still, let's go see what we can find out. Yeah! To the scene of the crime we go! Oh, 
Oh, what the heck? So I, it's St. Sinner's Den. This place has looked nice last time we were here. Huh? These must be the patient's treatment notes. Let's see. Tendency to jump from windows. Remember to place cushion at base of wall outside. Aren't we a story up from the ground here? Oh dear, poor Mr. Vigil. You know, feeling there's a better solution to the problem than a cushion though. Finding something you lost isn't always a happy experience, it turns out. Pursuing the truth can be a very dark business sometimes, can it? Yes, I'm afraid it can. Okay, back to freaking Fresno Street. Maybe we can find some new clues. Alright, then. If it turns out Grayson didn't actually die in here at all, where on earth could have been killed? Well, one way or another, we must find out. For Inspector's sake. You know, you look awfully pale again today, Mr. Naruto. <sighs> sorry. When I start thinking it through, I conjure up some horrible images in my mind. Your imagination is the culture van. No, certainly guilty. The photograph of Miss Vigil. Realizing the identity of this lady was a very great clue to exposing Mr. Gossip's true identity. Obviously, he lost his wife very dearly, which is why he felt he couldn't tell her the truth. What was that in the back? Although it didn't really seem like it was much of an effort to me. Now you say it, I have to agree. It's almost as if Mr. Vigil's true character. People really are very hard to fathom at times. Ouch. The prison? I guess we gotta talk to someone. Lord Van Six is reading. Look. He doesn't seem like he wants visitors, does he? But he must have noticed that we're here, surely. What do you Nipponese want? That's no way to greet the lawyer who's trying to his hardest to prove your innocence, is it? Perhaps not. I apologize. So what can I do for you, Mr. Naruhodo? Lord Von Zeig speaking earnestly. Oh, the fog will lift over London for the first time in months tomorrow. It's this this does feel very, very strange. I must say, I was impressed. Oh, well, thank you. Not by you, by your fellow Nipponese, your prosecutor friend. He was your apprentice. Oh, I see. It's sard sardonic, don't you think? For a man such as me, so loathing of the Nipponese, to be entirely at the mercy of two of you. I suppose. It's retribution for having played the part of the Reaper for all these years. Played the part. You once told me that you gladly allowed people to believe you were the Reaper. Because it helped reduce the amount of serious crime that took place in London. If keeping quiet and playing the part benefits the cause, and a cause I myself am committed to pursuing, then why would I choose to say anything? But the henchman of the criminal killed by the Reaper attacked you only the other day, and that was just mere recent attempts of your life, wasn't it? Someone is clearly profiting from your silence about all this. Someone is using you. <laughs> Believe me, ever since the Reaper first appeared, I've been doing my utmost to expose him. Or rather, expose the organization. Ah, it's a whole organization? It's inconceivable that all these accidents were orchestrated by one man. No, the Reaper always appeared to have very accurate information about the accused in each case. Which can only mean 
that somebody at Scotland Yard is involved. Someone at... You can't mean... It's taken me years, but I finally identified the essential figure in the Reaper's organization. Tobias Gregson. No. No! Gregson, the Reaper? Why? So, the reason you were investigating Inspector Grayson is because you intended to expose him as the Reaper? As I said, the Reaper of the Bailey is no single person. It's a highly secret organization which close ties to Scotland Yard. But there is no doubt that Grayson was a key member of the organization. I don't believe it. Are you saying that Gracie, that he was behind all those awful crash meetings there? Gregson didn't do the dirty work himself. He was the tactician. His job was covertly investigate the marks and plot their assassination. In order to do that without arousing suspicion, he regularly needed a firm alibi. Which is where Mr. Vigil came in, posing as the inspector. Vigil knows nothing of the Reaper, but the room he rents at Fresno Street was almost certainly the headquarters of the operation. Gregson would have met the assassin there for briefings. So we don't know ex actually who carried out the killings then. Actually, I do have a name. You what? Well, if you have a name, you have the true identity of the Reaper already then. Or, if I can name the woman. Oh. She's a young woman by the name of Asash- Asashin. Wait, what? Shin. But she did that already. Miss Asashin. The true name of the terrifying killer I know only too well. She came to Japan posing as a visiting student and murdered Dr. John H. Wilson. Then, just when it seemed that diplomatic protection would help her escape Japan in conviction, she died. The mysterious woman was herself murdered in a small summer beach hut. And that woman was actually the Reaper of the Bailey? Well, that's impossible. Mr. Naruhodo, this perhaps isn't the place to discuss. No, no, of course not. We can't mention it here. The fact that she killed Dr. J. John H. Wilson. Because Iris doesn't know, and it's very likely that the man was her father. Asashin. I should let father know at once. Yes, I agree. Kazuma, is it? Kazuma Soki. You say he's a friend of yours? My best friend. He's the whole reason I got to Britain. It was all of his merits. I have nothing but respect for him. Yes, I understand that. Only the very best students are selected for such opportunities. And I had a fine demonstration of how sharp he is in the proceedings earlier today. He missed nothing. In fact, his flawless performance very much reminded me of his father. Genshin Atsugi, the professor? It's true that the aristocracy at the time was the root of numerous grave societal problems. They were abusing their power, playing with the common man as pawns in politics, in economics, in war. In many ways, Asoki was carving out a canker from society that we British couldn't deal with ourselves. Ah, I see. But that's precisely why it makes no sense. Clint Von Sachs was a noble and upstanding man. He wasn't corrupt. Why did that damn Nipponese have to go and take my brother's life? In spite of having once saved me, mine. He saved your life? How did that happen? It was 10 years ago on a foggy night. What was to be Professor's final strike had sent a wave of panic through the capital. So Clint Butts and Zeke's had already been killed at this point then. Yuchin and Hai were walking down some back streets at a late hour. Of course, at that point, I had no idea of the true nature of the man at my side. All of a sudden... Don't make a peek, you're coming with us. 
We were surrounded. All of our assailants were armed with pistols, their face obscured by scarves. Flint was not only from Nova Heritage, he was a brilliant prosecutor as well. The scum of London hated the sight of him, and they had no sympathy for his younger brother either. I've been targeted several times before already. Yeah, it's Von Zeke's alright, Zeke's alright, we've got him. I could hear them murmuring amongst themselves. I knew they were after me. But just when I thought my time had come, if I let them kill you, Clint would never forgive me. It was a Sogi's voice, just a whisper in my ear. After that, I don't remember exactly what happened. The next thing I knew, there was silence all around. Gatchen lay on the cobble streak. Blood was seeping from his left hand. He shielded me. Two days later, they, are, they arrested him, on suspicion of being London's most notorious mass murderer ever, the Professor. How awful for you. All at once, I lost the brother I rever revered, and the foreign friend I held in such high regard. I'm so sorry, Lord Von Zeeks. That's the end of my miserable tale. I never thought I'd recount it all to anyone. Well, thank you for confiding in me. The Professor, the Reaper, and Inspector Gregson. I wonder just how intimately related they all are. I still quite can't believe that Gregson was essentially the Reaper, giving assassination orders to Giselle Brent. Mr. Narahodo, let's go inform my father. I'm sure our government will want to hear about this new information. Oh, that means I get to meet your daddy, Susie. Hooray! Yes, all right. Let's head back to the Great Waterloo Hotel, Dad. Move! What else? Oh, well, you probably just opened that up. I thought it yesterday, I think it again. This place is so princely. It's a wild guess, but I have a feeling you'll think the same tomorrow too. My tea is finer freckles than whatever they're serving in the tea room here though. What did you say? Oh, look what we have here. This is unexpected pleasure. Ah, uh, father. Oh, is this your daddy, Susie? How lovely. What a charming young lady, and you are? Oh no. Ah, uh, really? So you're the author of the Adventures of Herlock Sholmes, are you? That's me, Iris Wilson, at your service, sir. Susie's been a wonderful friend to me over the last year, you know. Well, Miss Wilson, I must say I read your work regularly and with much interest. Iris actually lives with Mr. Sholmes, you know, father. Is that so? Well, perhaps that goes to some way to explain the bright look in your eyes. <laughs> you wouldn't be smiling so airily if you knew just how bright she is, believe me. Now then, young Naruto, it was a pleasure seeing you in action earlier. It's a, as an invitee of the symposium, I was allowed to observe from the gallery after I, I twisted some arms. And I must say, it was truly an exemplary performance. Oh, well, thank you very much. Well, I'm fairly sure you admitted it by Kazuma on the end there. No, 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 please don't misunderstand. It was you who impressed me. Really? You didn't miss a step against Asogi, and we all know how capable he is. Really, to have matured into such a fine defense lawyer in less than a year is quite extraordinary. It's very kind of you to say so, and really nice to hear. What I saw in the court today confirmed what I've been hoping for. The favor I mentioned yesterday to Arahodo, I trust you haven't forgotten? Oh, no, you you did not did mention something, didn't you? But first, we have to, something to report, Father. Of course, of course. Shall we take a see what we'll discuss about us further? Huh? I wonder where Judge Joku has to go to.
Father, do you know about the so-called Reaper of the Bailey? I've heard rumors. Some members of the judiciary explained it all to me yesterday. Of course, when I was visiting a student here in London, the Reaper was yet to emerge. Right, he didn't appear until after the case when the visiting students had already returned home. Lord Van Zeex, who was the doc today. That was Beric, the younger brother of Clint Von Zeex, I believe. That's right, and he knows throughout London as the Reaper, as you've heard. But the truth is, it wasn't him behind all those mysterious deaths, it was somebody else. I see. So what you're saying is that there's been a professional killer at work here. Exactly. Someone by the name of Asashin, in fact. I beg your pardon? Did you say Asashin? You mean that Giselle Brent woman who was responsible for killing my great friend? Oh no, a friend of yours was killed? Uh, um, Professor Mikotoba, I think perhaps we shouldn't discuss this right now. Because the friend the professor is talking about is Dr. John H. Wilson. And that's not something we want Iris to find about. Not like, we, like this, anyway. Ah! I just remember something. Biscuits! The hotel has the most delicious looking biscuits. That was right out of the blue. She's doing this deliberately. I think I'll go and see if I can purchase some. I wonder, would you like to come to Iris? Oh yes! You just try to leave me me you just try to leave me behind. So that young girl. It's called Iris Wilson, is she? Yes, that's right. And she's the author of all those adventure stories starring the great Detective Shobes. But the name of the credited author isn't Iris, is it? It's Dr. John H. Wilson. Yes, I know. It's the name of her father, you see. Her father? Dr. John H. Wilson. I was deeply indebted to the man for all the kindness he showed me during the time in London. That's why I was keen to reciprocate and invited to Imperial Human University four years ago. But he was murdered last year by Giselle Brent. Why? Why would the hand of the Reaper stretch all the way to Japan? I was no Iris knows nothing about that case, but it seems very likely that the victim, Dr. Wilson, is her father. Well, I can't say that we ever spoke about his family, so I don't know if he had a daughter or not. But I think I can say with certainty that he was never the great detective's partner. So, it could have been another Dr. Wilson, you think? Well, John and Wilson are both common names, after all. Still, it's probably best not to mention this to a young lady until we can be sure. That's what we thought, yes. We're back! with cinnamon biscuits. Oh, they smell delicious, Iris. I think cinnamon will go very well with the tea they serve here. Don't you, Susie? Yes, I'm sure you're right, Iris. I haven't seen Judge J Jigoku for a while, have you? Oh, now you mention it, I haven't seen him since this morning either. I suppose since the symposium's opening was postponed, he'll have to he have gone to explore the Great Exhibition. That reminds me of something you mentioned yesterday. About Judge Kijigoku having once been the doc himself? Ah oh, yes, it was all tied up to some accursed trial. The close trial of Kasuma's father? Say so Shishiro was trying to mitigate Genshin's guilt, so he took the stat to testify. But he got a little carried away that, um, actually managed to break the witness's stand. Oh my. He also said some contemplative words about the British Empire for which he was charged. Oh dear, although it's worryingly easy to imagine him doing that. Well, it was alright in the end. He was acquitted and, was, and we returned home to Japan together. Thank goodness. Oh yes, Takeo Seishiro. I have a copy of the photo we all took together y yesterday. Please. Oh, what a lovely picture. It certainly seems to shout, we've arrived in Britain.
None of us had any idea what was coming when we took that, did we? No, no, that's true. So, you mentioned a favor that you'd like to ask me. Well, this faithful trial that you're fighting, one way or another, it will be over long. And when it is, I'd like you to accompany me back to Japan. You want me to? What? Father, what's the meaning of this? Now, Cesaro, you should understand. You've seen how our courts work firsthand. Japan's judicial system is an infancy, especially when it comes to defense. Oh, you mean... The Supreme Court of Judiciature is in desperate need of a good defense lawyer. As soon as possible, really quite urgently in fact. But, I've not even been in London a year yet. I've read all Sasato's reports. I'm well aware of your extraordinary talents. And having seen you in action with my own eyes earlier today, there's no question. You, Naruhodo, are precisely the man our country needs. So, you be leaving then, Runo? But then... What am I supposed to do, father? You came here to serve as Osoki's judicial assistant. Oh yes, she's supposed to be Kazuma's assistant. Our government is still in the process of deciding how best to deal with his situation, though. You've always chosen your own path, Suzato, and I trust your judgment. In this matter also. Father! Please, the pair of you. Don't look so downcast. It's merely a suggestion. You understand. I hope if I'm honest, but I won't force you. All I ask is that you consider it. I come to the decision by the time the trial concludes. Yes, alright. You... You won't leave, will you, Runo? The thought hadn't even crossed my mind. Up until now, I've just been trying to do what I believe to be Kazuma's will. And it turns out that he's still alive. Where does that leave me? Well, if you'll excuse me now, I need to telegram government ministers and the Japanese police with this information about Asashin. Of course, Father. Thank you. I look forward to the next month's installment of Miss Wilson. Oh, good. And please do come to Baker Street sometime, won't you? We'd love to entertain you. I would be delighted. The best of luck for tomorrow, Naruto. And... Give my suggestion to you your full consideration, won't you? Yes, I will. Going back home? And without... Oh... You know, Kazuma has always meant, meant a great deal to my father. I'm sure he loved the chance to meet with him and talk to him all of this. Yes, no doubt. Asa Shin. Of course, it's so obvious. Who? How could I neglect to consider the possibility before now? Why are you here? Mr. Sholmes! Hurley, where have you been? Why? I joined you all, t all for tea, of course. What an extraordinary question! I didn't notice you at all. No matter, no matter. Anyway, to more pressing concerns, Mr. Naruhodo. Oh, yes? It must. I must dispatch a telegram to your country at once. It's a matter of much urgency. To Japan, you mean? Tell me, to whom can I trust the task? Quickly, now, who? Uh, well... My father has just now left to send a telegram to the Imperial Police Bureau of Japan himself. I see. Well, he looked reliable enough for a bearded fellow. Bearded? I don't think what my father sports could be considered a beard, Mr. Sholmes. There's not a moment to lose. Kindly ask your trusty unshaven father to see the scent. I will, but what is it? No questions at this time, if you please, Mr. Sato. All we can do is pray. That for once... My deduction is airy. Doesn't that apply to your deductions are normally correct, Mr. Sholmes? Which isn't exactly- Now then! You must be- You may be surprised to learn that I am a busy, very busy man. I certainly have no time to hide behind set, sets of eavesdrops on other people's conversations. So that's what joining us for tea meant? 
I leave the setting of this in your hands, man, my dear fellows. Uh, wait a minute, Mr. Sholmes. He just sort of ran off, didn't he? A quite, quite a pace. I left the unpaid bill for his TBI too. That's maddening. I must catch up with Father at the telegram office at once, and I'll run and call us a cab straight away. And there was me thinking everyone would be clamoring to pay Mr. Shum's bill. <sighs> Did we get it as evidence? Nope, we don't. Like, comment, subscribe, Shuraka's XCB, and I'm signing out.